So next part, we have the auditor's opinion. So the auditor's opinion, take note, is a formal statement made by the auditor concerning a client's financial statements. So there are two types or two main types of opinion. We have what we call the unmodified or unqualified opinion and the modified opinion. Now the auditor will express an unmodified or unqualified opinion when the auditor concludes that the financial statements are prepared in all material respects in accordance with the applicable financial reporting framework. So unmodified opinion is uh, also known as unqualified opinion. So this unmodified or unqualified opinion is the equivalent of clean opinion. Now, if the auditor does not believe that the financial statements are fairly presented or the auditor is unable to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence, then the auditor cannot issue unmodified opinion. So the auditor will issue instead modified opinion. So the auditor will issue modified opinion if number one, the auditor concludes based on the audit evidence obtained that the financial statements are a whole as a whole are not free from material misstatement or the auditor is unable to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence to conclude that the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatements. So these are the types of opinion that the auditor can provide which will be communicated through what we call the auditor's report. As for the type of modified opinion, we have what we call qualified opinion, adverse opinion, and disclaimer of opinion. The auditor will issue a specific type of modified opinion, whether qualified, adverse, or disclaimer, depending on two factors. One is the reason for modification, and another is the pervasiveness or significance of the matter. If the auditor, having obtained sufficient and appropriate evidence, conclude that the reason for modification is a misstatement, and that misstatement, individually or in aggregate, is material but not pervasive, the auditor issues qualified opinion. Or, if the reason is inability to obtain sufficient and appropriate evidence, but the effect of the matter is only material but not pervasive, then the auditor will also issue qualified opinion. So in short, qualified opinion is given or issued by the auditor under two circumstances. One is there is a misstatement on the financial statements and the effect of the misstatement is material but not pervasive. Or the auditor was unable to obtain sufficient and, sufficient and appropriate audit evidence and the effect of that inability is material but not pervasive. Now the auditor will issue adverse opinion if the reason is a misstatement and the effect of misstatement is both material and pervasive. And finally, the auditor shall disclaim an opinion when an auditor is unable to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence on which to base the opinion and the auditor concludes that the possible effects on the financial statements of undetected misstatements could be both material and pervasive. Actually, when we say disclaimer of opinion, so it means that the auditor is not giving opinion at all. So meaning to say, the auditor is withholding the provision or issuance of any opinion. So because the reason is that the auditor was not able to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence. So there are, there are situation or circumstances or reason why the auditor was not able to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence. So one of uh, those reasons is what we call a scope limitation. So when you say scope limitation, it means that the auditor was not able to perform the audit procedure or was not able to obtain evidence either because the management prevented the auditor to obtain the evidence or the circumstances prevented the auditor 
to obtain the sufficient and appropriate evidence. Now, in case it is the management who prevented the auditor in obtaining sufficient and appropriate audit evidence, then the auditor should try first to resign or withdraw from the engagement if such is not prohibited by law or regulation. So if it's permitted, you can withdraw or you can resign from the engagement. But if not, then you will have to disclaim your opinion or you will not issue any opinion at all in your auditor's report. The auditor shall also disclaim when in extremely rare circumstances, there is an involved multiple uncertainties. And the auditor conclude that not with notwithstanding obtaining sufficient and appropriate audit evidence regarding each of the individual uncertainties, it's still not possible to form an opinion on the financial statements due to the potential interaction of those uncertainties and their cumulative effect on the financial statements. Then the auditor will also disclaim his or her opinion. So, but we will discuss further on these matters when we go to the auditor's report portion of our discussion. Okay, so just to summarize, the auditor issues qualified opinion. So under two circumstances, either there is a misstatement or inability to obtain evidence, but the effect or possible effect is material but not pervasive. So we issue adverse. So in case there is a misstatement, and the effect is both material and pervasive. And we disclaim an opinion if the auditor is unable to obtain sufficient and appropriate evidence and the possible effect is both material and pervasive. Or there are multiple uncertainties and the auditor cannot conclude no, based on based on the base based on those uh, uncertainties on the financial statements so the next question is that sir what do we mean by pervasiveness how can we say that the matter is only material but not pervasive or it is both material and pervasive so actually it's a matter of professional judgment on the part of the auditor but as you will see in our future discussion particularly in the auditor's report there are guidelines or there are guidance on uh, when can we say that a matter is, for example, only material but not pervasive or both material and pervasive. But it has something to do with the significance of the matter. So we'll cover that when we go to our discussion of auditor's report.